Welcome to our lecture online. What we're going to do now is look at the velocity curves of two objects revolving around the barycenter. Again, we have a larger object, let's call that M1, and a smaller object, let's call that M2. And again, let's take the assumption that M1 is 3 times M2. In other words, the mass of M1 is 3 times the mass of M2. Which then, of course, from the previous video, we realized that the distance R1 from the center of M1 to the barycenter is only one-third the distance from R2 to the barycenter. And the likewise, we would expect, since this is only one-third the distance, that the velocity of the large object would only be one-third the velocity of the small object. Now let's say that we're observing this, this binary dance between those two stars, with the line of sight coming from this direction. So at this very moment, the small star is moving away from us, therefore it's red-shifted, and the large star is moving towards us, so therefore it's blue-shifted. So we should be able to pick that up, if, it's not, if they're not too far away, uh, by using the Doppler shift of the spectrum of the light coming from the two stars. And so when we try to, when we try to follow that and we try to chart that, you can see that as the, the small object is moving away from us, we have what we call a positive velocity relative to the barycenter. And as the object is moving towards us, we have a negative velocity relative to the barycenter. Now what's also interesting here is, and even though this is just a hypothetical case, we do see things like this, that the average velocity is 40 kilometers per second in the positive direction, which means that the barycenter itself is actually moving away from us in the radial, velo or in the radial distance. So there's a radial velocity of the barycenter moving away from us. Both stars, as they're revolving around the barycenter, they're moving away from us at 40 kilometers per second. On top of that, we can see that sometimes the smaller object moves as much as 160 kilometers per second away from us, so the difference between the velocity of the barycenter and the velocity of the smaller object is 120 kilometers per second in this direction and 120 kilometers per second in this direction, so you can see that superimposed on the velocity of the barycenter. The larger object, which is, one, which is only one-third the distance from the barycenter compared to the small object, only has a velocity that's only one-third as fast, and you can see that here it's traveling 40 kilometers per second faster away from us than the barycenter, and here it's 40 kilometers per second slower. In this case, of course, at that moment it would not have any radial velocity because the velocity of the barycenter away from us at 40 kilometers per second and the velocity of the larger object moving towards us at 40 kilometers per second would then, of course, cancel out and we'd see zero Doppler shift at that particular moment. So it would be zero, 40, 80, zero, and so forth. So you can see here clearly that the ratio of the velocities, which can be detected if we have that nice line of sight on that particular binary system, we can then conclude if the velocity, if v2 over v1 is equal to 3 to 1, that means that the mass ratio, that m1 divided by m3, oops, not m3 of course, but m2, must therefore also be 3 to 1. So that means there is an inverse relationship. If the smaller object moves 3 times as fast, that means that the mass of the large object must be 3 times as much. And we also then realize that the radius, of course, and here we can say that the radius of the smaller object relative to the barycenter to the radius of the larger object relative to the barycenter also must be 3 to 1. And that's how we discover quite a few things by looking at the Doppler shifts of a binary star system. We can know their relative masses, we can know their relative velocities, and their relative radii from where they're at to the barycenter. And that's how it's done.